Hello and welcome to episode 77 of this Let's Play series. We are playing Tia the Awakening. In the last episode we managed to get home here and drop a whole bunch of stuff and at the same time we realized that we are short on a lot of mithril. So in this episode I think um, I wasn't going to record this uh, tonight because I wasn't going to go to sleep but then I realized if I don't I probably would just um, forget that I need mithril so I'm going to go and get these guy over to get some mithril so we can build some uh, hammers and things can I attack these guys? we cannot can mine some stuff though so let's camp Get some silver. Must as we can, I guess. Okay, we have idle people in two places. One here, which I expect, and one here, which I do not. So somehow. Oh, because silver was being gathered by the other group. That was strange. Let's break camp. Now silver is back and it's still not. Okay, if I move these guys off. Before you is a group of black wolves attacking something. As you look closer, you realize there are two packs. One attacking a small baby, and one fighting not Let's investigate. That the child is clearly protected by some magic, as the wolves seem unable to get to it. Let's However, split the party. You send a small group to protect the child, and the... Attack. It's auto-resolve. You won. Check. It is not easy, but both cat and child are fine. The cat's eyes shine gold, and you could swear it smiles at you. You feel a surge of positive energy. That's excellent. Now, can we gather some silver? And we could. Okay. That was interesting. So let's continue on. Go ahead and auto resolve this. So we're up here, down here, and down to the mithril. So build one suit of armor. Auto resolve. Turns. I'll resolve. But another armor. That looks cool. Nine range damage. Let's equip that on somebody. Sorry, eight, eight, ten, seven.
We do have a whole bunch of cool stuff over here. That is neither here nor there. You see the skies darken and the air getting heavy. The wind picks Let's up. Let's check these guys you out. Very quickly that you must have stumbled upon a territory claimed by Let's the just fight them. All you resolved. The, the storm dies down and the skies clear again. And the moonstones what we're after here. Attack these guys. I'll resolve. And some burnt meat out of it. Let's head down this way. The night was restless, filled with uneasy dreams and strange sounds rummaging through the village. Let's begin the day. As the sun finally rose, you began your day's chores, and all seemed fine, but alas, it was not so. Without water, your people will not survive long. Let's find a spirit. See the ruins down this way. So we're on our way there. Let's uh, just go there. Let's fight these guys. A royal crow. One of these, which is okay. We're going to hit this way. It's a very meandering um, way to get to Mithril. Okay, we get enough research to do something. And... I might want to save some of these just so that we can get things like scale ladder and dragon ladder or not now I feel like we're missing some of the food stuff I would thought that that would be in over here. Oh, I guess the uh, you can see all the food stuff automatically. Never mind. Dark wood, dry wood. That's we dragon bone. Let's just expose some of these. Right. Let's head this way to deal with our water supply issues. Search. You arrive at the spot marked by your ranger. Let's and go to the these. The girl does not move an inch. The woman does not respond. The girl looks at you for a time. You get closer to the enchanting lady and a warm light wash. She smiles. The sweetest. The game is simple, my darling. You turn try to the other game. spirit and try to. Start sneaking. Just to auto resolve. You sneak up on the mysterious woman and snatch a single strand of her hair. When you return to the siren, she is gone. But the hair you hold glows with a faded bluish light, like water. You realize that not only has the poison disappeared, any curses that ailed your people have also been lifted, and a blessing bestowed. So some less of attractiveness, which is fine. Let's take a look at our production over here. We're still building the armor. We do have a child over here, so hopefully we can... There's a unliving nest down here. Let's just go here since we're so close. Let's attack. I'll resolve. Diamond, which is nice. Then we'll head up this way. Because Mitro is over here somewhere. Over there. Okay, we have 
one moving left. Nothing worth uh, gathering. Help this way again. Out of movement. Get her some uh, fruit. For the variety, just get a whole bunch of it. Got a uh, 144, which is really nice. Let's break camp. Check for Mitro. It's right there. So go down here so we can get the fish as well. Let's camp. And, um, yeah, let's just camp tonight. See how much metro we can get. We should be able to get one. You come across what looks like a dried up log. But as you get closer, you see it has eyes and looks up at you. Listen in. Ah, people. Good. I thought I will perish in isolation. I have a boon to ask of you. I would like my ashes spread upon a fertile forest ground, but I have no strength or allies left. Will you aid me? Of course we'll aid him. I cannot offer much in the way of rewards, only that my body will leave some precious materials for you to use. This way, I will go on. The tree that you suspect is Alishi, a powerful forest demon and shepherd of trees, turns into ashes before your eyes. But you take the ashes and you feel a strange pull towards a place not far from here. Perhaps it is where the ashes should be spread. Let's go check it out. Oh, it's actually rather far from there. We'll go and uh You travel through the hills in search of resources and you come across the remains of an old settlement. The houses are small, almost built into the hills. Let's not do anything rash. You walk, speak together in a foreign Let's work together. The woman frowns, and her men take a few steps forward. We'll convince. I'll resolve. The conversation goes well, and so you end on a high note. Let's open the tools. Inside the vault, you find a supply of various wooden logs, some minerals, and a huge supply of dry... Chair. You share the spoils and sit by the fire with the orcs. There is an awkward distance between the groups, but it is certainly progress. The orcs get up to leave, but their leader turns to you once more. This was a trip to remember, and I would not like it to go to waste on account of our mutual hatred. I give you one of my men. Not a good one, mind you, he's a measly thing, but perhaps he can prove his worth amongst your people. But in return, one of yours will come to live with us. Let's not do that. This way we will learn about each other and rebuild our land differently from before. The woman nods in agreement and says no more. So I'd rather not lose a good member of our team. Okay, we're here. You come to a place where a single weeping willow grows evergreen and beautiful. You feel spread to ashes. You the remains of the leashy below the weeping willow, and you see, before your eyes, saplings of young trees begin to surface. It will not be a forest for a long time, but one day, the leashy would have given life to a new and wondrous woodland. The willow's long hanging hair begins to weep with crystal clear water that somehow feels good. The willow reaches out to you, offering the nectar. Take a sip. You feel any poisons or curses lifted from your bodies. A blessing also falls upon you. Excellent. So we get a blessing of health, a blessing of will, for 35 turns. That's a long time. 
The night of Kupala was once celebrated during midsummer when the sun shone brightest. The tradition continued even when the dark veil shielded the skies. But it was during those dark days that Kupala night became a beacon of desperate hope and a night for calling upon the gods to return to Thea. The seasons have changed after the darkness ravaged the world, but it is time for the first Kupala night since the sun's return. Let's prepare for a little celebration. Kupala. Let's prepare. The Kupala night was once celebrated only once per year, when the sun's power was closest to Thea. But during the darkness, the special night was celebrated as soon as the mystical signs were read by the village elders. As to what those signs entail, every wise one seems to have a slightly different story. There are several ways in which the solstice can be celebrated. And since this game is certainly very good in lores and things, let's just find out the full story here. During the long night of darkness, there was no way for the elders to tell when the solstice was coming. And within a few decades, the sacred night of Kupala was all but abandoned. But then, some old mystics read the solar signs. Brief moments where the power of sunlight, or the force of the moon and stars, shone through the dark veil with particular strength. Since then, Kupala night can be celebrated more than once in a year, but always when a great solar event is anticipated by the mystics. Very cool. The Kupala night is a night of many guises. It is the night that celebrates the rival bond of the sun and the moon. It is the night that sings to the power of life-giving water and the thundering fires, both with their power to cleanse the earth. The night where life and death are revered, and where love and its promise for the future are held up and cherished. It is a night to honor all gods and to cast away the darkness. There are several ways to celebrate the Kupala night and to prove yourselves. Some may take more time, some may be risky, but doing nothing is not an option. Then let's get it underway. The night of Kupala has many faces and traditions that need to be upheld. Bonfires are lit with sticks and stones and placed on hillsides or other high places around the settlement. Offerings of food and animal stock are made in honor of the many gods. Music, dance and laughter accompany the night's rituals. But the main event is chosen by the village elders with each solstice. There are several ways to celebrate the night and prove yourselves. Some may take more time, some may be risky, but doing nothing is not an option. Okay, so we have five options here. Um, we can find parents' flower. We can make a wreath of flowers and, and hair and put a little candle within. Find love and new hope. Large bonfire, burn herbs and food offering. Go swimming. Strength and prosperity. That's interesting. Of course, we're, we're not going to take this option. We're, we're going to do something. Let's do the find love thing. Let's hope we can uh, build more people or build more people, we can attract more people and, and gain new members to the village. Strength and prosperity, strength of parent. Let's just do this. This night you choose to honor the old traditions by following the rite of love and fertility. Any unmarried lad or lass looking for love and its fruits makes a wreath of field flowers, weaves their own hair into it, and then sends it down a river with a small lit candle attached on top. If the candle burns the wreath, or if it sinks in the river, its maker will not find love this year. But if it survives the flames and swims with the currents, it's a clear sign of love to come. If someone finds such a wreath down the river, fate dictates that they are the chosen lovers. Let's show us for the future. Every hopeful singleton weaves their best wreath in hopes of attracting a soulmate. Some clever conspirators hide downstream and accidentally find the fated wreath. Some wreaths swim away with the currents, but bring joy and hope to the hearts of their makers. You feel that the grace of the master of the water, Mokosh, falls upon you and cleanses your bodies. Soon after the Kupala night, a stork visits the village and gifts a child to one happy couple. Okay, so at least we have another child. Because we haven't had any jazz in a long time. 
So I have a whole bunch of blessing of health. And these guys have some health. Excellent. You notice a young child, of five perhaps, sitting on a stone near your path. Let's hug the girl. You, you notice her body is almost golden. You embrace the child, and it feels like home. Let's play. Just all the resolve. You play with the child, hiding and searching in turns. Best of three, she shouts. Then, best of five. But finally, she lets you stop. I like you. You know how to play for sure. I have to go now. Bye bye. The girl skips away, singing a merry song, and your people feel the blessing of Mokosh upon them. That's good. Right, so those are all good events. Our people level again. You can certainly use some of those because some of those uh, giants look scary. And we were on our way to mine some mithril before we were interrupted by Alishi's request. Not Alishi. Maybe it's, it was Alishi. You see the skies darken and the air getting heavy. The wind picks up. You That's realize good. very quickly that you must have stumbled upon a terrorist. fight. All you resolved. The, villi. the storm dies down and the skies clear again. That's nice. Let's actually go to our equipment real quick. Because some of our warriors up here are still using all trinkets or artifacts. Oh, these are for that. Tactics always good. Stealth. Extra damage. Trap is okay. Range damage is okay. Perception is good. Set some armor. Shielding is good. Give him some stealth. That gives him one shielding. This is two shielding. Okay. That's okay for now. Nothing here to gather. Can we go? Care of these wolf. Metro is over here, so let's go down this way. Okay, let's camp. We got ourselves some Metro. Should we get some fish as well? I don't think we need to worry about wood so much. But let's get some anyway. Actually, let's get better people down here. Actually it's not really matter. Okay. So we'll try to do this. Um, 
a few turns. You hear a strange commotion coming from the nearby bushes. A sort of cross between a squeak and a deep grumble of a salivating dog. As you approach, you see a weird-looking brown ball of disheveled fur, with big yellow eyes staring back at you. The creature is no bigger than a fox and has bat-like wings, a snarly smile with a range of sharp teeth, and it smells badly. It is apparently stuck in some hunter's trap. You recognize the trap to be orc-made. Let's examine it. After a closer examination, you realize this may be a skshak, a relatively harmless house demon, who usually settles inside a household and, if treated right, brings good fortune to its housemates. Let's release it then. You approach the trap carefully and gently dismantle it. Right, I'm gonna let you go, little fella. Just don't go all monstrous on us now, okay? The creature nods frantically, still squealing from the trap digging into its little body. You release the skshak, and as you do so, it tries to hobble away from you. After a few steps, it stops, looks up, and squeaks before speaking up. Are you going to eat me? Of course not. Oh, I am thanking you. I speak your speech not well, but I try to tell you. Weak is my body. I smile as I join Mokosh in the dirt soon in peacefulness. Thanking you, friends. Your tongue calls me Skshak and House Demon. Funny names. <laughs> And so I am both and none. But I tell you now of a house because you friends and good and I warn you. Once there was a house and there was joy and laughter. Once it was a place of magics and yummy foods. Then the darkened time came and no longer a demon I was, no longer helped my mistress. I cried as my eyes looked on her evil. No longer my lady. No more joy, all sad and angry and dead, but not gone, or alive, but not living. I tell you the house, because you helped me from the nasty trap, you good people. So please help my mistress now, free her from her trap, and she may be dirt with me and stop her bad, bad madness. The creature falls onto the ground, clutching its stomach in pain, and before your very eyes it begins to disintegrate into dirt. With its last breath, it goes on. Beware, friends. She eats. She's crazy. Got treasures. Set her free. The skshak is gone, and all that is left is a scrap of paper with a badly drawn map on it. Interesting. The house over there is not too far. So once we um, gather some mithril, let's maybe 50 of them we'll do five a turn oh the holy hawk is back again we need to meet oh what we should do however is go to these guys supply and let's not eat anything but fish because we don't want to um, eat up our supplies here before we move so we actually get 25 mithril Fish, anyway. So we are gaining a little bit. 40. Oh, we need to um, adjust this. Oops. of these things. So 
that's 50 mithril. I'm, f I'm feeling a little bit um, greedy. Let's get to 100. 65. Seventy-five. Ah, oh, child touch a hawk and instantly grew to an adult. And she is a inventor. Excellent. Now, need to get our second inventor equipped. It's a craft thing. Actually, let's see what this is silver and action wood. Five craft, okay. Might need to build a couple more of those. Just use one of these spears. Too heavy for her. Oh yeah, that's right. We need to get some more bow as well. Okay, and I think that's all that she can carry. I don't think she can carry it much more. And let's build herself. Crafting tool. Silver, ancient wood. Let's just do twelve percent. Let's send it all the way up top so we don't forget about it. Let's build five of these. She can work on it. We have 80 mithril. A ghostly figure stands in your path. It holds within its incorporeal hands a wreath. One made during the Kupala night and sent down the river by one of you. A ghostly figure speaks. Someone found your wreath. Thus your fates are now joined. But fear not, it is not my love you must endure. Down this path you will find the one waiting for your affections. Remember, once you go down the path there is no turning back. Will you honor the Krupala Knight's tradition and follow your fate? Wow, that's very interesting. So, we, we will. We'll see what happens. You go down the path and find a stunning female walking out of what looks like some underground well. She is drenched and her hair looks more like seaweed than human hair. She is undoubtedly a water demon. She spreads her arms in a welcoming gesture. I have found the wreath you sent down these waters. Thus we are fated to be one forever. One of your people follows her, and they disappear into the underground well. However, over the next few months, the fruit of their union seems to appear in your village, together with gifts. Interesting. So we lost one of those piconets, and we gained three children. These people at Mushroom Camp is a uh, carry way too much mushroom. Continue on. Make ourselves one of these. Go to equipment. Okay. 
So you can now equip the new one. But she can't because it's too heavy. Okay. Let's dismantle these uh, three crafts hammers. Get some resources back. Here we get to 95 metro, so let's go to our camp there and let's enable the rest of the supply. So, next turn we can get uh, more mo movement. Okay. Break camp and go find this house. As you make your way through the hills, you are suddenly jumped by a large, ragged group of crazed people who create a lot of chaos, but you're not sure what their purpose is. Within seconds, before you had a chance to fully draw your weapons, they run off into the hills again. But you quickly realize that some of the women in your party are missing. Let's chase them and get a woman back. I'll resolve it. The fight was tough, but you won. The scavengers are either dead or running for their lives. You realize with great dread that they managed to kill off some of the prisoners during the fight. One of the rescued people join your team, and you find some basic loot. So we found Alina over here. She's a gatherer. The only bad thing about this is that our people are now unequipped so she now needs to will everything again I think that's her sword five seven five actually we also have five six Seven. Okay. The shield. I assume it's that one. Make sure we're wearing that armor. Or those. Maybe one of those. No, she was wearing this thing. And she was wielding this sword, I believe. Not that shoe. Twelve, seven, eleven. Maybe that one. Dark armor. Maybe she's using that. Crossbow. Okay. What we should build also is a bunch of gathering tools. It's four gathering tool, four clay for clay. A six. That's costly though. Let's 
build. New straw. Some leather. That's a two gathering. Gives two, three gathering. That make it four. That's also four. It's very heavy. That's lighter. Let's just do that. If we're lucky, we get. Um, higher quality stuff once she's done with that she can make like 10 of those we'll pile them onto the um, expedition we're like way way out of time um, but let's go ahead and no let's Let's get at least get close up here. Let's camp and get some bird meat. To supplement what we had. Camp. Try to go up this way. Some stone there, we do not worry about. Let's just go close to the house. And then let's call it an episode here. And uh, next time we'll check this house out. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.